Hi folks, uh, welcome to Coffee with Job. Today coming from Tunks Park, it's Monday. Um, and let me just explain what we're trying to do here. We're taking this 3,000 year old poem from God's Word, which God's Word is living and active and it still speaks to us. And we're thinking, how does this apply in the, in the context of where we are today? And let me suggest something. Many of us, when we are going through videos like this or um, television programs or Spotify songs, we have the attention span of gnats. And what we just do is we just go, you know, we flick through, we flick through, we flick through. And, you know, people are always saying, wow, you've got to be really, right at the beginning, you've got to grab people's attention, then you've got to keep people's attention. And, you know, I, I, I just don't go along with that. And I'll tell you why. This is God's word. And I'm suggesting to you that taking five minutes, all right, sometimes it's six, just to sit down with a Bible, middle of the day, or whenever you do it, whenever you watch this, and look at what God has to say to you, is really worth it. And I'm suggesting if you skim read the Bible, if you just flick through things, you can't really do, you know, TikTok Bible, to be honest. This is God speaking to you. Just take your time. So here, in chapter 16, Job says this, Then Job replied, I've heard many things like these. You are miserable comforters, all of you. Will your long-winded speeches never end? What ails you that you keep on arguing? I also could speak like you if you were in my place. I could make fine speeches against you and shake my head at you. But my mouth would encourage you. Comfort from my lips would bring you relief. Yet if I speak, my pain is not relieved, and if I refrain, it does not go away. They say that your best friends are those who are your real friends in adversity, not in prosperity. Everyone loves you when you're doing well. Everyone wants something from you. But when you need something, and Job here is in desperate need. He's desperately lonely. He has no children, no friends, no sense of God's presence. He's suffering socially, physically, and spiritually. And yet his friends just bring him religious words, what Christopher Ashe calls words of the system, and no real comfort. Miserable comes from this idea of trouble, and miserable comforters is the ultimate oxymoron. They call Job a windbag, but he says it's your speeches that are long-winded. And I think of this in terms of a comforter. What kind of comforter do we need? And let me just read from John 14, because I think this is so lovely. I will ask the Father, says Jesus, and he will give you another advocate or a comforter to help you and to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. There's this tremendous promise of comfort coming from Christ. Now, how does the Spirit comfort us? He gives us words, but they're not the long-winded speeches. He gives us words that are full of life, words that bring us Christ. And that is the greatest comfort. When you go and hear God's word in church, that's what you need to hear. You need to hear the words of Christ. When I'm doing this stuff, I, I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to hear what God has to say. What I have to say is irrelevant. What God has to say, that's what brings you comfort. And then it's not just that we receive the comfort, is it? It's that we're able to give it. With the comfort we ourselves have received, we're able to pass it on to others. It's like Jesus, ultimately, on the cross. On the cross, remember, he cares for his mother. He wants to make sure his mother is provided for, even in the midst of his greatest agony. Again, let me just give you another New Testament scripture that talks about this. 2 Corinthians 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. 
For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it's for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it's for your comfort, which, is, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. Isn't that absolutely marvellous? We share in the comfort. We share in the sufferings of Christ. We share in the comfort and we're able to comfort. If you really want to comfort people, you need to know Christ and receive his spirit. I, I think that's a, a wonderful thing. All right. See you here again uh, tomorrow at the same time. God bless. Bye.